a lot of the films that the jury selects generally have, are solution-based, right? So they might be portraying an element that we need to pay attention to, an issue, a cause, but tend to also have solutions and give you information on what you can do to make a difference around that cause. And a big part is just waking up to the possibilities that you as an individual can do and create as well. Well, I always love featuring and discussing films that are, are around youth and how youth are getting involved. We had Julia Butterfly Hill, her earlier, and she was you know, really super inspired and empowered by our upcoming generation and getting them involved. And um, my next guests are with Racing Copods. I'm going to find out about Copods because I don't know very much about Copods. But I have Barbara McVeigh and Carlos Grana. And welcome, guys, to the Film Fest. Thank you. It's Thank your you. first time here. Our first time, and we're having a great time learning about this beautiful area and some fantastic people coming here to do great work. Yeah, how would you describe the festival to people who haven't been here before? Oh, extraordinarily warm and accepting and mm -hmm. curious and genuinely interested. They actually uh, read the, the program, they've seen the, the trailers. We've already had several uh, couples and individuals who've shown up to the film specifically because of what they've read about it. So that's, that's wonderfully encouraging. So tell us about racing copods. Racing with copepods. Copepods. <laughs> I didn't know either. Copepods. <laughs> so copepods. Copa copepods. Well, it might be surprising to find out that I they even know are. What a co copepod is. <laughs> it's like you're, you're not the right? only one. Okay. Um, but you'll be surprised to learn about them. Uh, they are, some argue, the most abundant animal in the world. Some argue they are the fastest animal in the world. They have one eyeball and little legs, and they are part of the animal um, kingdom, an animal plankton world of our oceans, and very vital um, as they represent the ocean plankton. Um, there's animal plankton and plant plankton. We get most of our oxygen from the plant plankton. Some argue up to 80%. And wow. most people don't know that. No. It's not just trees, but it's the ocean. Wow. I yeah. didn't know that. And what, what was your purpose in the first place in doing a film around this? Go ahead, Barbara. You go. Uh, I love the ocean. Um, I have two children. I um, see some very grim things happening in our world. Um, it was, this was my first film. Um, and Carlos, as a filmmaker from Los Angeles, joined me on this. Um, it was a passion project. But we really wanted to create a story um, and, bring, and highlight the world of plankton. Um, and 12 children are in the film. And they're sailing boats, little boats. They're learning uh, about just the water itself and just how beautiful and how fun they are able to enjoy, how they are able to enjoy the water um, and, and connecting to it in that beautiful, playful way. And then they go on a voyage to discover what they are sailing in. And most people don't even know what they're sailing in. Yeah. And it's a whole world in, of in itself and one that's very vital to us. So it was a film to inspire, one, first and foremost, and then also to tell the story about, about the world of plankton and what we ought to know more. That it's more than just what they see on SpongeBob. Most teachers don't even know that we get our oxygen from the ocean. Wow. It's been surprising. Wow. It's yeah, been you've very had, surprising. You, so you've had a lot of discoveries even in making this film. Yeah, like um, ordinarily when you think before, uh, uh, before you mentioned what the fastest animal on the planet was, ordinarily you think cheetah, cheetah. or a hawk maybe or a hummingbird. You know, but no, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a tiny, it's a microscopic oh, animal God. called a copepod. They're actually, they can run. They can uh, jump uh, faster than the speed of sound, of sound um, within a few uh, millimeters to uh, evade uh, predators or catch prey. Um, and, uh, and what was extraordinary to me about this film is that it combined sailing with oceanography. I'd never heard of a, of a sailing course that combined those two. That's really cool. Is that down in Marin? Uh, it's in Marin, know? but it's also around the country. More sailing organizations are uniting um, the science and education with the fun of sailing. And we were very fortunate to also have Dr. Sylvia Earle in I this I was going to ask you about So how did you connect with Dr. Earle? Well, her message is the message that we're also trying to convey. She had just released her um, film, Mission Blue, which is very powerful. And it was right around that same time we were making this film, and yeah. we just, it just, it was meant to be. Yeah, yeah we were literally <laughs> in the car, but one night, I think you were picking me up, and, so, and you mentioned, Sealy Earl's in town in San Francisco. And I was like, why don't we just, let's just it's storm the office. You knocked you know, on the door, door I said, literally. please. And this is our project, and she agreed. We, we asked for 20 minutes. I think we got about a full hour and a half. Yeah. Um, it was a powerful time. Um, and she, as a global leader, uh, and, and trying to, to highlight the ocean and, and say, 
A lot's going on in the world right now, but one of our most important things to understand and know about is uh, the acidification of the ocean. So what do we do about that? Stop driving. OK, yeah. That's a huge it's thing. It's easy. It's, huge, huh? it's the fossil fuels going into the atmosphere. Our oceans absorb the fossil fuels, mm -hmm. the carbon. And, uh, and even more than that, actually, it's just something discovered as yeah. well that uh, uh, not eating uh, meat is, uh, is, will be a huge step yeah. towards it. Even becoming vegetarian for like half a day, once a week or so, something that would definitely yeah. cut down Interesting. on Interesting. And did um, Dr. Sylvia Earle, that did she interact with the kids? As well, yeah. Did Absolutely. she sail with the, them? Yeah, you see that in the film. She didn't sail with them. We actually got to go to her uh, her studio, her her marine um, studio. Yeah, where it's, she it's, a, it's a lab submarine. where she builds submarines. That, this, this giant that's garage. Amazing. Yeah. And that's at 80 amazing. years old, she is globe trotting, um, bringing world leaders together to create ocean hope spots as a way to create um, areas in the ocean that are we do not touch, we do not fish, we preserve, just like a national park. Yeah. At 80 years old, she is on she our is sides. She's amazing. And she's going for it. And um, Isn't it amazing, though, when you do go to different areas that have been protected, the marine life is so, more, so much more vast. The, I mean, it's really shocking. Like, if you know, even in Hawaii, for example, in snorkeling, you go to a protected area and there's tons of fish. Go outside, not very many fish. It's really interesting to see what conservation can do and yes. the impact around that. So, the copepods, are they like, how big are they? Did I say it right? Less, okay. Uh, smaller than a grain of sand. Okay, so yeah. you need like a, a, a microscope, microscope to see to them see in detail. It. Yeah, you can see some of them with the naked eye, but they but they're quite literally about the half the size of a grain of sand. And you have your daughter Maya here with you, who was she's featured in the film and was one of the participants in this. So, did the kids have an interest in this in the first place, or was it just they just kind of opened it up and trusted you and said, okay, I'll. The ch we I'll had do the two feeling. weeks to pull this film together after we got the funding from the Schmidt Family Foundation. We had captains and boats and instructors and families and we pulled it all together within two weeks for the filming of this project. Things just happened and as we began to build, international scientists came to help us and sailors around the world helped do our, do our social media. People want to do something. Yeah. We just don't know what to do but the project came together. The kids I loved it. In fact, some of the children are actually speaking at their schools. Um, they've uh, spoken at other film festivals, and they have been turned on by ocean science. That's fantastic. And they want their world to be right. And Look we at it that. To them. You just followed your passion and did something entirely new. And it's amazing what the ripple effects will create from that. Mm -hmm. How did you and Carlos connect with each other? I think uh, we sailed together. Actually, we never sailed. We hadn't sailed together until then. We were members of the same uh, small sailing organization okay. called Sailing Education Adventures. Uh, so we've known each other for about 10 years now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so she knew that I was making uh, films. I made a quick promotional film for Sailing Education Adventures, and she got in touch with me for this. Very one. cool. What would you want to tell everybody about, like, the top three things they can do that's around your film, racing, racing with copepods? Um, and it, clearly it's so much bigger than the copepod, really, and what you're doing. What would you want to tell everyone and how they can get involved? Reduce driving. Think about your actions every single day and how you can make a difference. Uh, with me, it would definitely be also reduce the amount of uh, intake of, uh, of uh, uh, farmed animals, uh, specifically. Uh, but also, let's see if we can get this film in schools. What's most inspiring to me is just how inspired uh, children have been watching this film yes. at schools, particularly the, right. we've shown it at the LA, in the LA school system, uh, classrooms the size of 40, 50 students, uh, complete quiet and engagement with it, like never before. That's so great. It's, it's this, it's this uh, proposal of place-based or venture-based learning where the kids don't even know that they're, that they're learning. You know, that the youth yes. are, is our salvation. Absolutely. Uh, uh, at this point right now, it's almost too late. But in terms of uh, the next generation, uh, they can make a change. They are our hope spot. Uh, and like you said, with the oceans, um, initially I, I did not believe in hope spots uh, because I just think uh, this, this amount of damage, if we protect one small area, cannot uh, rejuvenate, cannot come back. They do. It does, it just does like work. our bodies can too. Mm -hmm. yes. so it can, can the, heal. Yeah, so it's this so is, uh, true. This is one way to do that. So <clears throat> we would like to make a, uh, a, a whole series of Racing with Couple Pods related films, <coughs> excuse me, based on this one and to provide it to schools as part of a broader curriculum for teachers with lesson well, plans and the ability to take children out into nature and learn. That's great. Thanks so much for everything you guys are doing to make a difference and continuing. And I wish you the best of luck with that. I know my youngest daughter actually saw your film at the Delaroe Theater. It was part of the, the kids track. That's right. They had there, so they were bringing in schools. That's another great part of Wild and Scenic is 
getting the whole community involved and they bring bringing in local schools to see the films and so that was very great that was really cool that they could offer that so thanks so much guys barbara and carlos thank great you. to have you at wild and scenic have a great rest of your time and um Best of luck with everything. Thank you for all that you're doing. It's yeah. just fantastic. Right? Yeah. Every community should have something Every like this. Every community <laughs> should have this. Totally. Wouldn't that be amazing? What would the world look like if there were wild and scenic film festivals all over? Actually, you know what? We do actually have a tour that we take films and we go across the country. I was going to say, what would it look like? But we actually do have tours. 130 cities around the yeah, world, Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. I'm Elisa Parker, Wild and Scenic Film Festival here at the Media Lounge, and we will be right back. As land-based mammals, we often look, but do not see. Most of our planet is water. If we open that door and peer into the water itself, what do we discover? What do we discover about ourselves? And then, what story do we tell? Once upon a time, 12 young, land-based mammals were called from their school day world to go get wet. And learn to see the unseen that is right before their eyes. If you look at a cocoa pot sample like we did today, you'll see that a lot of them are just kind of drifting around. But then you see them making these little jumps. Studies of the speed generated by a cocoa pod have shown that they actually defy the laws of physics. Humans have learned how to dominate the Earth but not how to manage the consequences. How do we reinvent our made world in harmony with the natural world that supports it? And how much time do we have? We're racing not copepods, but ourselves. <laughs> 